Okay. Well, good morning to everybody. Good morning. morning. I did this lecture before, and everybody asked me for a video, and I don't have one. And I should, and it may be something I'll do in the future. Uh, I'll talk to people at Tone Based Piano. If you go online and look at Tone Based Piano, it's a, it's a new company that is doing a lot of uh, video lessons with pianists and different guitarists, all kinds of musicians uh, that people can study from. It's fabulous. And I'm doing one at Brooklyn College, August 31, on double note technique, and it'll be something that will be available. Uh, so what I'm doing today at Sonata Piano Camp is what I call Good Morning Piano, which is what do you do when you first go to the piano, whether it's in the morning, the afternoon, or night, whatever it is, the first thing you do, it's like you brush your teeth in the morning, you stretch in the morning, whatever you do, the piano, uh, it's a physical instrument to play. And we often think of it as something that we play vertically, yet I kind of look at the piano as from here to there. I think of it more horizontally. And the way I approach the instrument to play is on a very horizontal level, very much on vocal lines, everything. And that goes right to where I do the technical regimen. So I say, good morning, piano. What do you do when you sit at the piano? Well, and I studied with Adele Marcus, and a lot of the things I watched her do at uh, during my lessons, I started with her when I was 16. And it's... The, it's playing with the piano rather than at the piano, which is a total different way of, of using the instrument. I often say the first thing you should do is sit with your feet kind of flat on the floor around the pedals. Sit on half, the front half of the bench so that you have horizontal mobility. And I'm glad that you're all right. If you write all these little things down, you know, I could create a handout and give it to everybody, but like my teacher used to say to me, I'm not spoon-feeding spoon you here. <laughs> and uh, I had a ninth grade teacher, social studies teacher, who was a lawyer. And we would walk into that room, and there would be a, a blackboard filled, and there were green, green, the green board, the green blackboard, was filled with his chalk writing, the notes, for whatever we were doing for that day. I mean, so close, you had to have good vision. This. You, and he wanted us to write the notes down. He wouldn't give us a handout. And I could never figure out why, and then I realized why. <coughs> when you get a handout with all these different things I'm gonna show you, it's not the same as when you take a piece of paper and a pencil and write it out yourself, because that's from the outside in. When you do it yourself, it's from the inside out. And every time you write something down that we go through, you're learning it subconsciously as you're writing it down. So I think it's very important to write everything down that you think pertains to what you need. Um, so like I said, sit on half the bench. If it's a chair, a bench, whatever it is, half of it at least then gives you a body and chair. And you can even sit on a chair with a back. It gives you a sense of good posture. But if you don't have that, you create your own back of the chair by just leaning slightly forward so that you have horizontal mobility. And my teacher used to say, you should be able to grab the ends of the piano. If you could grab the ends of the piano, then you're situated comfortably enough to be able to get to each end of the keyboard. I wonder if we should ask Francis to... Are you distracting? Oh, yeah, I'm hearing him. I'm trying to think. Put your middle pedal on that B flat so that you can play the rest of my can. can would you like me to ask um, Maybe just Polly to maybe speak room. with him or yeah, to Yeah, because it's, it's, it may be clear than what you're hearing. Anyway, that's one thing that's very important. No, I'll repeat it. Um, so using the piano horizontally that way, grab the ends, feet flat on the floor, and then at least you have a sense of, you're centered with the instrument that way, okay? Um, shoulders are relaxed. Elbows close to sides, just very relaxed. There should be no tension, no tension whatsoever. And I know there's many techniques 
on relaxation with talpin techniques and this one's technique and they, if they work for you do it but basically my own way of having the instrument is in the most relaxed natural way possible uh, so what i remember my teacher used to do was a technical version and the first thing was a chord now, she didn't teach me these i learned them from reading the uh, sheets in a book that a uh, book Clavier magazine would publish them. Uh, Dean Elder's book, Pianists to Play, if you could still find copies of that, it's in there. And it's a tech, part of the technical regime is the uh, diminished, I call it the diminished seventh chord stretch. And it's in right hand alone and left hand alone. And my teacher did them a certain way, but I tweaked it a little because I felt that the, the natural shape of the hand didn't quite work for the left hand as well as it did the right. And for the reason being, the chord in the right hand would start with C, above middle C with the thumb. So if you want to write that down how to do these exercises, I would do, this is the best time to do it. So figure one, C1, one, two, three, four, C5 with the thumb. And then you build a diminished chord going up to E flat, second finger, G flat, third finger, fourth finger on A, and pinky on C. Now, if you have students with smaller hands, or you yourself have smaller hands, just bring the top two notes down a half step, from A, C, to G sharp, B, and you get this chord. It's a nice jazz chord, nothing wrong with it, but either or, that's the point. The layout is so that there's enough equal, almost equal space between the fingers and the E flat and the F sharp on two and three fit the natural shape of the hand. Would you mind repeating that sequence of six? Yes. 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 Yeah, so C with the thumb, E flat with the second finger, F sharp with the third, A with the fourth, C again with the fifth. And if you have need for smaller hands, just bring the top two notes down a half step so they're on G sharp and B. I'll demonstrate each hand separately. So, what I do is the metronome would be on like 60, just like a natural heartbeat. 60, 58, 56, whatever's good. Each note's going to be done four times each, but I would start with two for the first times you're doing it. Um, and we start with the fifth finger first, and I'll show you how it goes. And if, if you write this out, I'll show you, you write it, then I'll show you how it goes. Grab the chord on the first beat, put your thumb on the wood below the keys on the second beat, raise your pinky on the third beat, and hold it up for two counts. This is how it goes. So I'm going to say down instead of one. Here's your ticking. Grab the chord. Thumb down, pinky up, two. Down with the pinky, relax the wrist, up with the pinky, stretch. Down with the pinky, relax the wrist, up, again. You're going to do that four times, two times first, but as you get used to doing it, then do three times, then do four. The reason why I put the thumb on the wood below the keys is that it gives you more leverage and it also relaxes your arm. If your finger's on the note, already all the, the, your wrist is tight. If you put your thumb on the wood below the keys, it relaxes the wrist. So you've gotten rid of that one element of stress and tension. So that's why I do that. You can even move the piano like that, believe it or not. You can. Anybody can. You're just pushing your fingers back and forth. This also reinforces the firmness and the strength of the fingertips that you need, even if you're playing pianissimo. So it doesn't sound thin and surfacey without projecting. So this is a great exercise for that. So again, it's, you grab the whole chord, thumb down, and we'll do it, we're all gonna try it later. Up, two, pinky straight up, elbows close to the sides, relax, down, relax. So when you relax, in order to get the wrist to go up, you just lift your fingers up a little bit, like you're gonna go back toward the piano, and that just relaxes the wrist. Because if you don't do that, you're moving your arm. That's not going to do it. It's in the wrist. You need to relax those wrists. Everything.
And then the, now after you do the pinky the fourth time, after you've done two, three, uh, three, up, two, last one for the pinky, two, and the fourth finger stretches out, not up. Fourth finger stretches out, two, down, relax, up. Straight up, two, drop. When you drop, pull it towards you slightly. That reinforces the first finger joint. And the third finger separates the upper hand from the lower hand. So that's a good center point. Up, two, drop, pull it towards you, relax. Up, two, down, relax. Second finger up, you feel a stretch under the hand. Don't overdo anything, just very relaxed. Two, down, relax, up, two, pull it towards you a little, relax, up, two, and always just keep relaxed. Two, thumb out, two, play below, relaxed, out, two, and four times or two times, okay, when you're done, just shake your hand up. Now that shouldn't cause any issues, it should just be enough. But it's then open, just like you breathe. Let the hand breathe. Open, close, just a couple times, just to feel it. Try a scale. You're gonna feel more strength, there's no doubt. Also, by holding the fingers towards you after you strike the key, also reinforces the concept of drawing sound from the piano. Instead of just plunk down. So you don't get that wooden sound. You get more of a string sound. Okay? I think the piano is a string instrument more than anything. It's a string instrument by way of a percussive device, which is a key goes down, percussively strikes the string. But what we're really hearing are the strings, not the wood. It's not like you're, you know, and it's the same with the, you know, any instrument in percussion. You're hearing the sound of a kettle drum, it's the way you draw the sound from the timpani. So it, it depends on your concept, but we have strings. So we imagine we want to get to the strings. So that leads you to want to play your pieces that way. So that's what we do with that. Left hand, I do a little differently. I do A to A. So you start with your thumb on the A below middle C, which is A4. Second finger on F sharp, third finger on E flat, fourth finger on C, fifth finger on A. Okay? Now, if you have a smaller hand, or a student that has a smaller hand while they're growing, do the same chord you did in the right hand for, the, for that accommodation, and just play. Start with uh, the pinky on C2, E flat, F sharp, G sharp, E. It's the same as this chord for down. And the reason I'm doing it there and not here is because if you do it here, you're, you can strip it here, you're free. And people always ask me, I don't know, is my wrist too high, is it too low? How should I sit at the piano? Where should my arm be? Stand up, play a C major triad, sit down, done. <laughs> so, could you repeat the notes for the left hand, please? Yes, the right B for the, the smaller hand. stretch? Yeah, right. for both. Both, oh, okay. Starting with C, A below middle C. F sharp, E flat. Stretch, mm -hmm. start with the ledger line C. <laughs> C2, so from the bottom, C1, C2, put your pinky on that, and E flat on the third higher, F sharp, G sharp, and D. Flat. So, same idea. We're going to feel the slow beats. If you have an extra, don't put it on. <laughs> I think 58 is a little better than 60. I don't feel it's pushed with 58, which is like this. 
something like this. You can always find a measure from somewhere. But, so, you play the chord on the first beat, second beat, thumb on the wood below the keys. Now, two, pinky up, two. back of the piano, sliding a little bit to lift your wrist. That relaxes it. Up, two, two. And if you do that relaxation between, just lift it once or twice. You don't have to like shake it, because that'll make it worse. Up, two, up, two, two. That's how it is. Count out loud. Two, with the next one. Two, up, two,
Point all four fingers up, like an airplane going up. And drop the fourth finger only. Lift the fifth, slide over a little with the thumb to get the fifth finger to go to C. Go up chromatically, lift the fourth finger to D flat, to D flat. Drop down to A, relax, to D, relax, up to B flat. That's it. I don't do any more. There's no need to do any more than that. You don't want to strain anything. You just want to slowly build up more prominence in the fourth and fifth fingers or a lot of the weaknesses. What we're trying to do with this is to reverse it. Thumb and two being so heavy, we want to make lighter. Four and five, we want to make stronger. So that when you get to do things like...
used to doing these, you're going to be doing this. <laughs> Is it, uh, did you have the hangers replaced? Is it uh, dull? Is it um, a, an older piano? Do you have it covered? Do you have a rug over it? So, you know, accommodate. Don't ever feel you need to overdo anything because of the instrument. It should always feel comfortable and mm -hmm. never, never strained. Um, but you had a question. For the last exercise that you did, could you show the position of your fingers? They look pretty straight and flat because back here we couldn't see. Okay, through. that's this one. Yeah. Uh, just always just up. Five relax that. Relax after. Relax after while you're stretching. It opens up, that creates more breathing in your playing too, because your hand has to breathe. To me, your hand has to breathe the way a singer breathes. And that's how you get singing sound and you shape phrases vocally. That that's you know, using the hand the way you use your Lungs is to me how I approach the piano for playing lyrically. But um, so I've done, we've done those exercises. Then we move to how many people do the Hammond exercises? Or as the French would say, Hammond, because that was his name. Yes? Or have in the past. I grew up with them. You grew up with them. And have you done them recently? No. No. Journey, I did. Journey, too. The Hammond is really for fluidity and evenness. I mean, when you get done doing hand in a certain way and your arms are free, you do Hands over it because the left hand's a little lower. 
but I like doing the reverse. All legato, all staccato, one hand staccato, one hand legato, reverse it. You could do all of that. It's a different way of studying them to make them fun, especially for kids. Like, oh, I have to do those again. Oh, I don't want to do my hand. And that's like, well, if you find it creative and interesting to do, it'll be fun to do. And they'll enjoy that. So you have the, the hand exercises. I'm not going to talk about Clemente or Chan again. Scales. Arpeggios. What I do with the scales and arpeggios, just because to me it's like you go to the doctor and you, you, you want the doctor to tell you, take two of these, take one of these, take three of these. And you write, and it's, you know, I don't know what, what, what do I do to get these to be better. This is the way to do it. The easiest way without it becoming a burden with scales and arpeggios is to follow a four day schedule. And it's three major scales, three minor scales, but the minors have to be harmonic and melodic. Uh, you want to do natural minor, you can, but I, the melodic minor going down is natural minor, so you don't have to battle there. So I do on day one, C major, G major, D major. So you've covered no sharps, no flats, one sharp, and two sharps. You said C, D, and? C, G, and D. And they're relative minors, C, A, and B. Day one, that's for your scales and arpeggios. Day two. See, when you do the scales, or when you, for your students, do you suggest they just play through them, or should they, uh, do you suggest <coughs> accenting one, then three, then five, and, or uh, one hand staccato, or just playing through them? You could, there's, some, there's no. I mean, there's time constraints, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, for me, the idea of scales is to be able to create a fluidity, no matter what, which one you're doing. I don't think scales need to be done staccato, unless you're doing, you know, you need to practice the Prokofi third concerto. Wants it detached, she doesn't want it. Wants it detached, for certain isolated things, but daily scale work, it should be legato. Scales are supposed to, because if you see music that has you know, scalar passages in them, 10 times out of 10, they're legato. You know, most they are. But they're supposed to be musical. Mm -hmm. I always tell kids, you start, play these things as though you're playing music. Don't think of it as a digital da 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 Sing out loud. Sing your scales out loud. If everything you do, sing out loud. Because, and then they always say, I have a terrible voice. And say, well, so do I. But when you sing out loud, it's your own natural instrument. You are bringing the music out of you. And that, in turn, brings it out of the piano or anything you play. So I think that's important. Even singing out loud at a, a scale, it just makes it musical. And it's training the student to play from their mind and how they feel more musically instead of digitally. Uh, so the scales. Uh, day two is um, C, G, D, A, E, and B major. A, E, and B, because we're adding sharps. So that has three sharps, four sharps, five sharps. Okay? And the minors are the relative minors, which would be F sharp minor, C sharp minor, and G sharp minor. Sounds involved, but this is the easiest, quickest way to get the job done, and the most painlessly to get it done. Um, there's no need to do the six and seven sharps because they are and harmonic to the flats. This is how I do it. In the two days, you have the <coughs> sharps basically done. Day three, F major, one flat, B flat major, two flats, E flat major, three flats, and their relative minors, which is D minor, G minor, C minor. Day four. I'm sorry, could you repeat day three? Day three is uh, F major, B flat major, E one. flat major. One, two, three flats. C flat major. E. E, because it's three flats. And the relative minors are for F major is D minor, and for um, B, flat. B flat is G minor, and for E flat major is C minor. So here you have F major, relative minor, B flat major, relative minor. to do A flat major, D flat major, which is the same as C sharp major, and G flat major, which is the same as F sharp major. Okay? 
right? So you're covering your six and seven sharps that way. I'm just making your life a little easier. Um, and you're going to do the relative minors for the four flats of A flat major is F minor. of the 
they beat. And I think that's very important. You could do that with a million pieces. Um, or how about... So to me, that's you know that's important. Any kind of scale work or passage work like that. Um, so stats with scales. If you do two scales, you know what book I love. Uh, a friend of mine once introduced me to when I was learning how to teach young students. David Hirschberg's Scales and Chords are fun. Major mode, minor mode. And the reason why the David Hirschberg, H-I-R-C-H-B-E-R-G, David Hirschberg's Scales and Chords are fun because it's written out how to practice. Right hand, one octave. Left hand. Hands together. see the four octaves, and they get frightened. So they're building it up that way. Also with scales and arpeggios, when I go up the keyboard, I let, I let the left arm be like, it's like an airplane wing. It's just gliding up, and the right arm glides down. So you got this feeling here, and this feeling here. And that's where sitting like half the bench pays off too, because you have horizontal mobility. You have to be able to move around like it's a tennis court. You know, you can't wait for the ball to come to you. You gotta go to it. If you're up here, go here. You, you can even move a little. Sometimes I quietly just move over a little bit if I need to be up here. <laughs> because I never liked the way I played arpeggios. I always felt they weren't even, and I always felt like I was going to mess it up. So again, it's an add-on technique, but I do it where it's, <coughs> you can write it down to one octave, four times, two octaves, two times, three octaves, two times, and four octaves, two times. They're all two times each, but the first octave, four times. For example, oh, let's do D minor. <laughs> So it's first octave four times, and then what? How, how many times? Two times each. Two times each. Okay. Yeah. B flat major is the nastiest one I found. used to say you summon your energy in your wrist, you almost snap your wrist back. 
And you know, you don't even need a piano to do it. You could just be sitting somewhere and just do that. And if you're sitting by the computer for hours, well, just sit back and just do this. It's just like, it's like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> up, down, up, down. Let your elbow, yeah, let your, but let your elbows hang. First start out like this, limp. Like you ever see a dog coming up to beg for something? And I could say that because I'm a beagle. Shh. Don't throw tomatoes at me. But then just up, drop. Up, drop. Up. And your fingers are almost curved, not open. That's tight. Almost, my teacher used to open, close her hand and open it like this for up. <laughs> Close. That's too much work. Didn't work for me. Worked for her. She had great office. I just let my hand go up. Chopin wrote his etudes, it was uh, probably easier to use those instruments. So you can't you know, break your hand over some, you know, some of these pieces. I played a piano once in Milan, and it, she said, the lady who owned all these instruments said, that's the piano built right after Chopin's. Go try playing it now. She says, you're working too hard. Just play, just play, just play, you know? <laughs> Sonatas and a book called Gratis at Parnassum. Has anybody heard that book? You can write down Clementi, Gratis, G R A D U S A D, little word, Parnassum, P A R N A S S U M. There's a piece by Debussy, Dr. Gratis at Parnassum. Exactly, mm -hmm. same idea. And he probably got that title from the Clementi book of all these exercises. And it's, a, it's an interesting book. The first one starts with, it's a right hand exercise. <laughs>
this one. That one. And there's so many of these. There's a big book of these. And they're all pieces, they're like etudes, they're pieces of music. And they're really nice. Some of them are really quite beautiful. Uh, then there's Moskovsky's etudes. Uh, I, I'll move on to something like that and do one or two of those. Like um, this one. <laughs> If you look up Moskovsky's etudes, M O S Z K O W S K I. Can you spell that again? M is in Mary. O S Z K O W S K I. They're etudes, E T U D E S, and little d e, etudes de virtuosite, V I R T U O S I T E. So the one in C, there's a few in C major. This, the, the scale of one is really very nice. Strong anyway, you want that to be 
we want to bring out more of the fourth and fifth fingers. So she we would do this with a very loose wrist. Play the A2 by Chopin, <laughs> you know, the harp. 
I used to be able to play it. Now when I start to play it in the middle, I feel like I can't go on. I get tired. Um, Maybe it's because I'm out of practice. Do you practice it just lightly and slowly? Because I think that piece needs to have very high. Like, That's the do one. The, yeah. Do you do this? Do you do this? No, do I do don't. This? Do you just <laughs> to it weighs your wrist down and tightens your wrist. That's just me. I feel like you have to be totally free of everything. Um, <laughs> I have to put all your, your wonderful things um, on. How did Liberace play with all those rings on it? <laughs> you imagine it took them off how fast um, So the notes in the right hand, if you're doing the regular stretches, thumb on, the, uh, on C. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, you're good there, you're good there. C, E flat, E flat, E flat, E flat, no, that's it. F sharp, F sharp, A, C. Mm -hmm. I just play, play the chord a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Play all the notes. On the second beat, you're going to put your thumb on the root below the keys, 
And the third beat, we're going to raise your pinky, so we're going to do it. Okay, one, two, ready, grab it. Down, thumb on the wood, pinky up, <coughs> two, drop, relax the wrist, down, up, <laughs> two, down, two, relax after, up, not the arm, but slide your, when you need to relax, you're going to lift your hand up. So that relaxes the wrist, not the arm. Keep your arm hanging. Your elbow should stay close to your arm. Yeah, just hanging, hand. just hanging there. So up with the pinky, two, down, two, up, two. See, do it again. Put your put your thumb out here more, so that your hand is open. Just your thumb maybe down here. so that your wrist has a chance to go up and down, not the arm. So you like spider fingers. Like, yeah, just like, oh, no okay. Because cool. otherwise you're going to have tight hips. That, that's basically what, that, what that's all about. Left hand turn a little bit. Alright? Just play a scale. Let's see if it feels different. Are these good? Are these good? what's tight and what's loose and what to move it. So that's pretty good. Um, 
And I, I've been recording this on Facebook Live, so if I tag Sonata Camp and they were able to put it on there, you can actually watch this whole thing over again. We'll figure out, we'll figure <laughs> we out how to make that happen. Deal. Because there's just so much <laughs> going yeah. into a short period of time. Good? Helpful? Yes. All right. Well, anybody have any questions about all of this? What happens mm -hmm. when you start getting arthritis? <laughs> well, you know, I'm not a physician. I'm not a physician. Because I don't know what people take. I don't know what people rub on, what they, what they take, what shots, what they... Take it so I'm hurting. Do you want to know the only thing I could say? I forgot to put my I'm not a physician, but it's drink. Oh. My wife will say, yes, drink just tart cherry juice. A glass a day. Just tart. I don't know. One of the companies makes it knits and all. Just tart. Just tart cherry juice. Tart cherry juice. Really? Tart. Yeah. Just tart. Just tart cherry juice. Oh yeah. But you're asleep. Yes. The cherry juice. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
playing is naturally, and, and singing out loud helps that, because that's, everybody has their own natural instrument, and their voice is it. Even if it's not a beautiful one, it's still yours. <laughs> yeah, mine's not. But I, my teacher always sang when she taught us, and she used to, um, her father was a painter. So her sound when she sang was so cantorial, that's why she created such a gorgeous, gorgeous piano sound. Warm singing with lots of color and, and expression. It was just a beautiful sound. Um, but I always say, play it the way you'd sing it. You know, that's how I kind of approach it. So, yeah, did he say that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I read this. There was a really good book about it because students wrote it about him being their teacher. Yeah. yeah. And that's what he said. He would tell them think of opera and music. Because the piano was becoming a more uh, singing instrument, it wasn't as percussive coming from the earlier keyboard instruments. So he was embracing that, which was great. Mm -hmm. so. Are you playing here tonight? Tomorrow night. You have a fantastic, you're very much virtual. Virtuosity. Virtuosity. He does the stretches. Do the stretches. <laughs> you will too. You'll see a big difference. It takes a week or so and you'll, you'll notice a difference. Wow. So, well, thank you all. Thank you very thank much. You so much. Now I feel like I have to do the other hand. Yes. I know I'm out of balance. This is good. I just wanted